The armed forces of Ukraine are assessing threats to the situation in Vulada and considering two scenarios. Army General of Ukraine, former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service, Mykola Malamuz, told on Espresso TV channel. Firstly, we are guided by the fact that Vulada is a really important logistics and defense center which is of tactical importance for our prospects. This applies to both a possible enemy offensive in the direction of Donbass and the maintenance of a logistics route to supply the Donetsk and Zaporizhia groups. This is an alternative route to the Crimean one in case the Crimean bridge and ferry crossings are destroyed. It may be one of the alternatives along with the one that goes from Mariupol to Tokmak that is directly through Zaporizhia region. That is why the enemy is aiming to capture this center in order to flank Pokrovsk and then closing our grouping in Vuladar and a number of other military units to advance across Donetsk region. But we have information about his strategy. It is clear that Russia is now trying to surround our 72nd Brigade and a number of units in Vuladar, he said. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces have fortified positions and heights in this area which give them advantages, but the enemy has a numerical and firepower advantage. This is an extremely difficult situation, so the enemy is gradually advancing in terms of encircling Vulada. But as for the future, we are assessing these threats and considering two scenarios. The first and main one which is being considered by the command is to strike from the flanks of the enemy coming in from different sides of Vuladar. This can very effectively devalue its prospects. This is the format that will allow the armed forces to block the enemy's capabilities in encircling Vuladar, Malamuz said. The second scenario is the withdrawal of the Russian armed forces from Vuladar itself. If it is not possible to group a sufficient number of firepower and forces, the general said. This is an extreme option, which involves holding positions, destroying enemy reserves and continuing defensive positions in new defense sectors behind Vuladar. These are engineering fortifications that will provide protection in new positions for the reinforced units and those that will leave the besieged Vuladar. As long as we see that Vuladar is standing, we are ready for the operation. The command does not disclose the essence of the operation and this is right, perhaps there will be an unexpected decision for the enemy in this sector. We hope that we will hold our positions and be able to counter-attack the advancing enemy forces," he concluded. Flooding caused by continuous rainfall has killed at least 32 people in Nepal's capital, and another 12 are missing, police said Saturday. Rains have been pounding since Friday night and are expected to continue over the weekend. 17 people were also injured while 1,053 were rescued across Kathmandu, according to Nepal police spokesman Bishwo Adhikari. He said all police personnel across the nation have been ordered to help in the rescue efforts. The government had issued flood warnings across the Himalayan nation warning of massive rainfall. Buses were banned from traveling at night on highways and cars were discouraged from the roads. Security forces were ordered to high alert. Home Minister Ramesh Lekhak told reporters that there are reports of damage in other parts of the country too, and officials are still collecting information. Parts of Kathmandu were inundated by the swollen rivers with many houses flooded and residents forced to move to top floors. A huge area on the southern side of the city has been mostly flooded. An army helicopter was used to pick up four people who were unable to leave their houses. Most of Kathmandu was without power and internet for a period of time. There were reports of landslides and flooding in other parts of the country. The monsoon season that bring heavy rainfall began in June and usually ends by mid-September.